Once upon a time, in a distant land, there existed two neighboring cities named Jabolga and Jabolsa. Despite being under the control of different rulers, the people in both cities lived peacefully for many years. The rulers also had no quarrels with each other, except for their inability to agree on who should rule the small village that was located directly between the two cities. Since both rulers were equal in power and resources, they never managed to reach an agreement, and this conflict remained unresolved for a very long time, until the ruler of Jabolga decided to put a diplomatic end to it. He sent a courier to the ruler of Jabolsa, explaining that he'd come up with a brilliant idea that would solve this dispute once and for all, and that he would explain this brilliant idea if the other ruler agreed to meet up face to face. Having been involved in the world of politics for a very long time, the ruler of Jabolsa did not want to meet his rival at his own palace and he was sure that the other party also shared his fears. He sent a reply asking his rival to explain his plan in another letter. It didn't take very long for a response to arrive. The ruler of Jabolga did not want the other party to be influenced by the opinion of his court and wanted to settle this dispute between the two. He proposed that both parties set out toward the opposite city with a small entourage. Eventually, they would meet each other at a spot between the two cities and discuss the plan without any distractions. In truth, the ruler of Jabolga had nothing to fear from the members of his rival's court, because the ruler of Jabolsa believed only in luck. For him, the word of a hundred advisors meant nothing. The only thing that mattered was the result of a coin flip. In fact, in order to respond to his rival's letter, the ruler of Jabolsa simply flipped a coin. Luckily, the result was positive, which meant that he would agree to the ruler of Jabolga's request and quickly set out with a small entourage. As planned, the two parties, each approaching from the opposite direction, met in the middle of the road and agreed to put up a special tent for the negotiations. The ruler of Jabolga insisted that the negotiations take place in his tent, but the ruler of Jabolsa demanded the opposite. For a while, it seemed like the argument would go on forever, until the ruler of Jabolsa proposed the decision be made with the toss of a coin. Unlike him, the ruler of Jabolga was not quite as fond of coin flipping, but because it seemed like a reasonable solution for a small issue, he agreed to it. The ruler of Jabolsa flipped a coin, and the result was in his favor, so the two rivals headed inside his tent to begin the discussions. As always, the ruler of Jabolsa believed in the power of luck more than anything else, so he proposed to do another coin flip to determine who would be the ruler of... On the other hand, the ruler of Jabolga believed that luck and chance could not replace intelligence. Determining the fate of a village and its people with a coin toss would not only be disrespectful to the people, but it would also undermine the ruler's reputation. Instead, he proposed an idea that had never occurred to his rival. He believed that the village belonged to those who lived in it, and that they should have the right to choose the ruler they preferred. Of course, there was a flaw to this idea, one that the ruler of Jabolsa was quick to see through. Because they were both rulers, the people of the village had good reason to fear them. It would have been impossible to hold fair voting in the presence of both kings. But the ruler of Jabolga had already come up with a solution. He proposed that they procure two barrels and ask the people to vote anonymously. If they wanted to be part of Jabolga, they could put a stone in the appropriate barrel, and vice versa. This way, they would be able to vote without fear. The plan seemed solid, but the ruler of Jabolsa was not pleased. For him, 
This system of anonymous voting was no different from the flip of a coin. According to this system, each villager's vote, be it wise or foolish, would have equal weight. However, as much as he disliked the proposal, he had no choice but to comply, after having flipped a coin, of course. The preparations were made, and the rulers explained the situation to the villagers, inviting them to vote. Once the voting was over, the number of stones in each cask was counted. The ruler of Jabolga emerged victorious, and his rival had no choice but to back down. However, he still refused to acknowledge the role of the people, and believed that the result of this voting was due to his own bad luck. No matter how many times the ruler of Jabolga tried to explain how people can control their own fate, his words fell on deaf ears. The ruler of Jabolga was adamant in proving his point, so he officially invited the ruler of Jabolsa to the celebration in the new village, asking him to bring two people he deemed extremely lucky and unlucky for an experiment. For now, everyone decided to go home and return one week later for a day of celebration and experiment. As promised, the ruler of Jabolsa brought two citizens along with him, one with very clean attire and a smiling face, and the other with worn clothes and a grumpy demeanor. The first man explained that he felt very lucky to be in the presence of two rulers and that he'd always try to remain as optimistic as possible. The second man, on the other hand, believed that he was the unluckiest man on earth and that he was destined to be miserable for the rest of his life. After exchanging pleasantries, the ruler of Jabolga began to explain the experiment he'd prepared to the two men. He told them that two narrow alleys awaited them. One was covered with dirt and the other was covered with gorgeous rugs with a bit of distance between each one. Each man would have to go through one route and come back through the other one. He also emphasized that this was no race and that both of them would be rewarded upon the completion of this task. In truth, he'd hidden a bunch of gold coins and jewelry in the dirt road and had also hidden a small hole under one of the rugs. Naturally, the one who chose the dirt road would be the lucky one who would find the jewelry, and the one who chose the road covered with rugs would be the unlucky one to trip over the hole. But nonetheless, they both had an equal chance. As always, the ruler of Jabolsa proposed that they toss a coin to determine who should pass through which road, but the other ruler wanted to leave the choice to the participants. If the ruler of Jabolga was right, then the lucky man would choose the dirt road and vice versa, proving his point. The ruler of Jabolsa agreed to this plan, and they first decided to ask the well-dressed man to choose his preferred road. He explained that it made little difference to him and left the choice to the other man. The miserable man decided to flip a coin and go through the dirt road. This worried the ruler of Jabolsa, since he thought that the miserable man would come across the gold coins and jewelry, disproving his point. However, because the result had been determined with the flip of a coin, he could not object. When both were ready, the experiment began, and the two men headed toward their chosen roads. The well-dressed man took time to think over the situation before setting out. He knew that this was an experiment and that something must be at stake. At first glance, he thought that perhaps the two rulers intended to see who would dirty the rugs. So he decided to take big steps in order to avoid stepping on the rugs. On the other hand, the miserable man felt like he was being fooled believing that even a blind man could go through a perfectly straight dirt road. To prove his point, he closed his eyes and extended his hands until he reached the wall at the end of the road. By doing so, he actually missed the pieces of jewelry thrown on the ground. 
The well-dressed man entered the dirt road with perfectly open eyes and saw the gold coins and jewelry on the ground. He counted the number of items on the ground and went on. The miserable man had also entered the rug-covered road and stepped over the rug concealing a small hole. He tripped over the hole, cursed his bad luck and continued down the path. Finally, both men returned to the starting point and stepped out in front of the rulers. First, the rulers asked the miserable man to explain what he saw. He told them that he saw nothing remarkable, except for a hole that was hidden under one of the rugs. When the rulers asked him about the dirt path, he explained that he saw nothing because his eyes were closed the entire time. As for a reward, he wanted to have one of the rugs. The well-dressed man explained that he'd come across no hole since he decided to skip over the rugs, but that he'd seen exactly 31 gold coins and 13 pieces of jewelry on the dirt road. As for his reward, he would accept anything that the rulers deemed worthy, which was soon determined to be the pieces of gold and jewelry on the ground. The ruler of Jabolsa, believing that he'd won the competition since the well-dressed man had emerged victorious and proven his luck, happily rewarded the man with all the gold coins and the jewelry. He turned to his rival with a smug face and explained that because of his bad luck, the miserable man hadn't even seen the pieces of gold and jewelry right under his feet. However, the ruler of Jabolga had a different idea. He believed that luck had nothing to do with it. The miserable man hadn't even decided to think for a moment before taking part in the experiment. And for some strange reason, he'd also decided to close his eyes the entire time. On the other hand, the well-dressed man used his intelligence and rightfully emerged victorious. Moreover, he was respectful of the kings and had a positive attitude. He believed that the outcome of this experiment was not due to one man's luck, but rather to his intelligence and attitude. The ruler of Jabolsa wouldn't back down so easily and the two continued to argue for a while on the role of luck versus attitude and intelligence, but neither of them managed to convince the other. For the time being, they decided to put their differences aside and enjoy the rest of the celebrations.